Hi, welcome to another session of ENT. I am Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, your ENT educator at an academy. And I've been teaching ENT for nearly 18 to 19 years now. Huge experience. And in the last 18, 19 years, I've taught to almost every institute in the country, almost all of them. And I've also written three books, which is you can see on the screen. The first two are targeted towards the NEET PG aspirants and the central exam like AIMS, PGI and all that. And the third one is specifically written for foreign medical graduates who are aspiring to write the NEET PG exam. <clears throat> right. So, uh, I bring a huge amount of experience when I teach ENT to this guy. And before I really dwell in the topic of the day, I want to tell you that every evening in the month of July, every weekdays actually, Monday till Friday, at 7 o'clock, I take one hour free, free, free ENT session. Free, absolutely free. Monday to Friday, every day till the end of July. So there are going to be nearly 20 sessions of free ENT and each day is going to be a different topic. So I highly recommend that you join this every day in the evening and also invite your friends and your colleagues so that you get to learn a lot of ENT, 20 hours of ENT nearly all free. And I'm going to take all the important topics and usually I also touch on the things that we cannot teach in the lecture th properly because lecture we have the limitation of time. So this is almost, you know, since it's free, we can teach you whatever we feel like. You can even uh, ask if there's any topic you want me to teach you, you can just get in contact and ask me to do it. I'll prepare and uh, teach you that topic thoroughly, properly. So it makes sense that you join this and I highly, highly recommend that you, your friends, your colleague, everybody must come 7 o'clock every day, every weekday in the evenings on an academy platform. So you have to go to an academy platform, the website, and from there you have to attend this lecture. So with this in mind, background, let's start with this <coughs> uh, MCQs that we are going to deal with. Now, this MCQ sessions that I take, image-based questions, I try to be very consistent. Each 15 minute session, the images are going to be of a particular topic only. I don't take one from here, one from there. I try to keep it simple, one topic. And today I picked up tympanic membrane images. The questions are based mainly on the images of tympanic membrane. <clears throat> so let's see the first question, which says, a young boy had roadside accident few weeks back. He has now come to ENT OPD with a complaint of hearing loss in the right ear. The autoscopic examination is shown in the image. What is the probable diagnosis? Is it glue ear, traumatic perforation, battle sign, or cholesterol granuloma? <clears throat> so I'll give you a few seconds to think so that you can arrive at a conclusion or a question, uh, answer of your own. Then I'll give you a correct answer. Now I think out of the four choices, two can be ruled out very, very easily. Traumatic perforation and battle sign. There is no perforation, you can't see any perforation here. Although there is a history of trauma, roadside accident, but there is no perforation. So that's straight away ruled out. And battle sign has nothing to do with the tympanic membrane. Although battle sign is also to do with trauma, it is skull based trauma. But in this battle sign, it is to do with the skin over the mastoid. The skin over the mastoid becomes bluish. We know that. So nothing to do with tympanic membrane. So it is either blue here or cholesterol granuloma. Now look at the color of the tympanic membrane. It is deep blue almost, right? In blue ear, it's not deep blue. It's more of gray, you know, it's more of gray color, tympanic membrane, but we call it glue anyways. But glue ear has nothing to do with uh, roadside accident. It's simply hearing loss and it is usually seen in young kids, not young children, but it's seen in small children actually, pediatric age group. So this is a case of cholesterol granuloma straight away. <clears throat> cholesterol granuloma is also called, sometimes called old, <clears throat> old hemotympan. This is the other name for cholesterol granuloma, old hemotympan. <clears throat> so what is hemo is blood, tympanum is middle ear, there is blood collection in the middle ear long 3-4 weeks back and where does the blood come from because of trauma so there is a history of trauma 2-3 weeks back 
the blood had collected this has become old now it begins to look blue in color and the tympanic membrane also becomes blue in color old hemotympanum right but there are other colors of membrane sometimes red color pink color so which are the other conditions with different colors of tympanic membrane you should know this <coughs> as you can see that red membrane is seen in acute suppurative otitis media esom red bulging cartwheel appearance all you know this then flaming up in color is seen in autosclerosis actually the active stage of autosclerosis you know this also chalk like white is seen in tympanosclerosis chalk like white chalky white because of calcium deposition there is a calcium deposition on the tympanic membrane that causes sclerosis of the tympanum tympanosclerosis the name itself tells you it is chalky white but look at the blue that we are dealing with blue membrane can be seen in three conditions blue ear is the most common cause of blue stain panic membrane but i also told you but in blue ear the membrane is not classical blue you can't call it a classical blue deep blue sky blue navy blue no none of that it's more of gray is but we call it blue blue then cholesterol granuloma is the best case where you can see a deep blue like this even deeper than that can be seen in cholesterol granuloma and glomus tumor because it's a venous tumor is a tumor of veins and venous blood is bluish blood so but this is not always blue it can be red it can be blue sometimes it is red sometimes it is blue both are accepted blue is less common red is more common but blue is accepted so if they ask you three causes of blue membrane these are the three causes of blue membrane and it's a very popular mcq that you should know <clears throat> right then we talk about second question again i told you they are membrane based question and in this otoscopic image of tympanic membrane identify the arrow marked structure and pick the incorrect answer so first you have to be able to identify what is the structure and then accordingly this is a very popular thing they give you a tympanic membrane or middle ear image and they ask you to identify structure and almost every exam they are doing this so you have to really know this you can make out it's a tympanic membrane perforation right i'll identify the structure for you but first let's talk about the question choice a says this is exteriorized during <coughs> type 4 tympanoplasty surgery second says during cochlear implant the electrodes are inserted through this third says microwix microcatheters are placed here and fourth one it says it always vibrates at opposite opposite phase to the stapes foot plate <coughs> so first you should be able to identify the structure what is this this is the round window so the question is about round window right and this is stapes and stapes area is the old window area. so this is old window area this is tendon of the stapedius muscle this is handle of malleus right and this bulge is promontory p for promontory this this thing is annulus and you can see a big perforation only the annulus is annulus and the handle of malleus is there rest of the membrane is gone so this is subtotal tympan perforation this is called subtotal tympanic membrane perforation right so if the annulus also goes then it becomes total so this is a difference between subtotal and total if the annulus is still preserved like this one then it is subtotal if the annulus is also gone it becomes total perforation <coughs> so the question is about oval window sorry round window isn't it now round window we all know the electrodes of the cochlear implant are passed through the round window so this is a true statement then microwix microcatheter are also placed at the round window this is true this is done for minious disease i'm sure you know this microwix microcatheters are filled with either uh, gentamicin or streptomycin or steroid one of the three things gentamicin or streptomycin or steroid they are filled inside this and it is placed at the round window and round window vibrates opposite phase to the oval window round window oval window they vibrate like this opposite phase of each other and oval window has the foot plate so it becomes opposite phase to the foot plate also so this is also a true statement so first one is a false statement 
but the correct answer because you have, you, have you have to find out pick up the false statement in this and therefore this is the correct answer <coughs> a exteriorize means exposed to the exterior environment it is exposed actually what happens is in type 4 tympanoplasty we cover the round window with a graph that temporal spatial graph you all know about temporal spatial graph which is used for ear surgeries so we take the temporal spatial graph and we cover the old window but the round window is exposed so round window is uh, sorry round window is covered old window is exposed in type 4 so oval window is exteriorized in type 4 not the round window right there is type 6 also in type 6 the reverse happens in type 6 we cover the round oval window and the round window is exteriorized so exteriorization of round window is true for type 6 tympanoplasty not type 4 right and tympanoplasty is another very very important there are six types of tympanoplasty one two three four five six and you have to know everything about this all that six types of tympanoplasty which are very commonly asked in the exam so it's, it's a very important topic that you must know <clears throat> okay this much about this question and round uh, round window then we go to next one a 30 year old lady has been having ear discharge with hearing loss for few months the otoscopic finding is shown which of the following cannot be done all can be done except is it miringoplasty, tympanoplasty, mastodectomy or topical eardrops? Think, take your time. But first you have to make a diagnosis, isn't it? Now what do you see on the tympanic membrane? What is this? This is attic perforation. This part of the tympanic membrane is attic, pars placida and there is a perforation. This is called attic perforation. And this white thing that you see is cholestatoma. So it's clearly because of both those, this is unsafe CSO. So this is a case of unsafe CSO. Even if one of the two is seen, attic profession, it is unsafe. If you can see only see cholestoma, it is unsafe. If you see both, then it is clear cut unsafe CSO. In unsafe CSOM, atticoantral disease, attic, see, atticoantral disease, attic. What is the treatment of choice? Mastodectomy is a treatment of choice. We always do that. This is the main thing. After this, you can also do tympanoplasty. So this is also true. And ear drops are always used. So true. Miringoplasty is contraindicated. This is a very important point. In unsafe CSOM, miringoplasty is contraindicated. You should never do a miringoplasty. Right. Miringoplasty is done for safe CSOM. It is contraindicated in unsafe CSOM. And this is a very, very popular question. Very popular question. You have to know this. Okay, so these are the three questions that I was going to talk about today. I hope it is useful. But before I leave you, I'm going to talk about two courses that we are coming up in ENT. <clears throat> One is this called Operation Need PG21. Look at the name, Operation Need PG. And started on 6th of July, will go up to December of this month. And is going to be taught by top faculties and there are going to be two revisions. The first revision, the two revision, the first revision, as you can see at the top, is going to go till October and in this, we are going to teach the entire subject in a concise manner. The name is concise course. As you can see, the name says it's concise course. So ENT otherwise is taught, taught in 30 hours, but here we are going to teach the entire ENT 16 hours only. And this is true for all the subjects. And all the subjects will end in October. And then October to December, look at the second statement. Then we are going to have second session and this is going to be MCQ based session, live MCQs. So first concise and then MCQs and MCQs in ENT is going to be only 5 hours. So 16 plus 5, 21 hours done, the entire ENT. Right? And this is true for other subjects also. And we are going to have 10, look at the last statement, 10 grand tests, then 50 quizzes and we are going to cover 7000 questions and all that. Right? And we are going to cover all the 19 subjects. These are the subjects that we are going to cover. And in this chart, they are also given each subject how many hours of cons concise revision, how many hours of MCQ revision. ENT, I told you, is 16 plus 5. And this is the faculty list which is going to teach you. ENT, as you can see, is going to be taught by me, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal. Right. Now, if you join this course, you can use this referral code DRSanjay10. If you use this referral code DRSanjay10, 
then you get 10% discount on this. If you use this referral code, you can you get 10% discount and any NT course that you want to join. Any course you join, you use this code, you still get 10% discount. Right. So this is one course for NEET PG aspirant, but I'm coming with another course for MCI screening for FMG aspirants, graduates. And this course is called crash course plus MCQ or ENT. The concept is the same. Same concept. First revision, then MCQs. And this is target for students who are going to write this August 2020 uh, MCI screening exam. And the whole course will be covered in five days only. Only five days. We are going to revise the entire ENT theory as well as MCQs starting from the 15th of July till the 25th, 22nd of July. Five days complete. And each day they are going to be three hour session. The first two hours is going to be a concise theory of the important topics. And next one hour is going to be MCQs of the same topic. So each day we are going to be three hours, theory two hours, MCQ one hour. And this is going to go for five days and we are going to cover the entire ENT in 15 hours. That's it. So I highly recommend that you and your friends join this course. Uh, if you join this course, I can tell you with written guarantee that you don't have to revise ENT for your MCI screening exam. This is it for you, right? So this much for today, it was as always a pleasure teaching you. I hope this session was useful. So keep look out for the ENT sessions on YouTube. Uh, we are going with image based questions and we also have a session on other things. Uh, but in the evening, I told you on uh, Unacademy platform, one hour sessions from seven to nine on weekdays, different topics of ENT. Right now we are doing instruments of ENT. So please join all these courses use Dr. Sanjay 10 as a referral code. So thank you. Wish you all the best for your future and everything that you do. And I'm signing off as Dr. Sanjay Agarwal. Good evening to you.